Now, as I was saying in the introduction to uh, this part, these tracks are kind of all about texture, you know, it's rather than everything being super clean and super polished, it's about having a bit of atmosphere and a bit of vibe. And a good way of doing that is adding some background ambience. You'll probably have heard a lot of records sort of in the last few years, you adding deliberately adding vinyl crackling or tape hiss and things like that to add a little bit of vibe. And that's a cool way of doing it. That often works. But a slightly different technique that I've been playing with recently is um, using sort of ambience from other settings to add just a little bit of background noise. So I've sampled this here in our current project, this TV Atmos, as I've called it. Um, and this is just recorded off the TV. It was the background on some drama or something like that where there was some uh, rain falling and it's just a background atmosphere with a bit of rain on it. So that adds a, um, a bit more texture, a bit more interest to it and you could quite easily leave that as it is and just running that in the background would add a bit of depth to the track. which actually works pretty nicely, so you could quite easily leave it there. But again, I'm going to add something to it just so that we can move it around a little bit as the track progresses and uh, make it a little bit less static. So I'm going to use um, Ableton's slice function here to slice this into some bits. So if we right click and do slice to new MIDI track, I'm going to pick 16th notes here, whereas it would by default be on transient, but there's not any real discernible transients in that, so you're probably better off just tell it to do sixteenths. Built in is fine, so press OK. And now we've got this new channel which has got 16 little bits of that background noise. All chopped up. They all sound pretty similar but that's not a problem. We can delete the audio track there. And just go in here uh, and clear that. And I'm just going to randomise the order a little bit just to, uh, just to uh, mix it up a bit. So Again, they're all very similar to one another, so it doesn't matter too much where you go with this. So let's just click randomly for a bar. And I've listened to that. And it'll probably sound pretty similar to the original at the moment. Fill every, uh, every 16th. So that's pretty cool, listening to it in context. Again, that'll probably sound more or less as it did before. But what we can do now is mess around with the individual slices a little bit. So whilst it sounds cool constant like that, it may sound good to mess around with the envelope so it becomes a bit more rhythmic. So by doing that, just bringing the decay down and then messing around with the sustain level, um, we can kind of turn it from a constant noise into kind of a rhythmic gated kind of thing. Which again might be nice to just move around as the track progresses. The difference is fairly subtle, but um, on a track like this, in my opinion, just adding those little subtle movements. So it feels like the track's kind of doing the same thing for five minutes, really. But there's just enough changing to keep it interesting. So that works, but I'm going to add a little bit more to that just to, again, add a bit more interest to it. Uh, I'm going to put a bandpass filter on it with a bit of LFO movement. So it just kind of drifts around a little bit. So if we go into our audio effects and drop auto filter on there. Uh, it's on low pass by default, which actually sounds quite nice, but I'm going to try with a band pass. Quite like that, sounds uh, interesting, so add a bit of LFO.
by default, the phase is set to 180, which is the LFOs of the left and right channels completely out of phase with those. One side's up, the other side's down, which gives it a nice bit of stereo, but probably a little bit too wide stereo for me at the moment. So I'm going to just drop this down to just have a little play with it and see what sounds good, actually. But they want to be a bit out of phase, but not too much. So that sounds nice. So it kind of sounds like there's two versions of it sort of following one another left to right, which sounds uh, pretty cool. Just have a little play around with the frequencies of loads in context so it sits in the groove right. And that's a nice thing we can mess around with, just bringing that sustain up, as you can hear, it gives the track a bit of an ebb and flow, bringing it down goes more rhythmic and bringing it up becomes more of a sort of white noise-esque effect. And it's just a nice, uh, nice bit of movement. And the sound that I used for that was like I say, just a random bit of background noise. Um, I was actually trying to sample a, a bit of speech off the TV and found the background noise was actually more useful than the bit I was trying to get. But you can use anything, you know, just sample some random stuff, take a mic out into the garden, you know, hang a mic over your balcony and pick up some background noise and, you know, just find some interesting textures that way.